I believe in arguing the issues and convincing people through hard work that it's in their interest to elect an ethical, honest, and progressive guy who's fighting for the neighborhoods, who will pull the ideas out of the neighborhoods, who will put the community organizers and the, the real experts. The real experts are those who've been spending 25 years in the trenches trying to correct what's wrong with their community. Those are the experts. Give them an opportunity to have a say in how their neighborhoods are run. Give them an opportunity to access the money and the power and the bully pulpit of City Hall. Give them a chance, and you'll see a very different city. I mean, Miguel de Valle is pretty real. It doesn't get any more real than Miguel de Valle. I'm sorry. You either like him as a nice guy, a principled guy, an ethical guy who will not pander. He doesn't pander. It makes my job really hard sometimes, you know? <laughs> One of the co-chairs of Miguel's campaign is uh, Dr. Quentin Young, who is obviously one of our main advocates for single-payer. Uh, Miguel has been a single-payer advocate uh, his entire political life. And um, I think it's very appropriate that we're here making a pitch. Um, and I, I don't really need to, I don't think, I hope I don't have to explain how Miguel is uh, by far actually the only progressive in the race. Um, decide, besides how certain people are posturing. But I do want to address one thing which I think is important to address, and that has to do with the question of, uh, which is on everybody's minds, the question of viability. Because from the very beginning, an uh, a independent, anti-machine, progressive elected official declaring that he was going to run for mayor was, in just about every circle, dismissed. And yet, here we are, about a week from the election, and we are uh, making headlines. We're still in the running. We're one of the top four candidates. And actually, despite all of the polling, which I think is a very uh, a fascinating part of this election, something that I think progressives and political analysts and political pundits need to dissect for years to come, Look at this poll that Carol Mosley Braun just released as an attempt to correct what Rahm has been doing basically since the beginning. And I was looking at the poll, and she polled 10 wards in the city. She polled one ward, the 36th ward, which has been dominated by a machine alderman for decades. Banks ran it. He now has his successor, Rice, running for alderman. And Carol's poll showed... Miguel de Valle getting a little bit more than 1% in that ward. And uh, someone came in and said, look, how can this be? I said, exactly. How can it be? The 36th ward has a huge Latino and significant portions of that Latino population are Puerto Rican. It is part of Miguel de Valle's old district. Our polling, our phone banking, and we have phone banked or canvassed in 40 Four of the 50 wars in this city, we have approached approximately 400,000 voters. We have 2,500 volunteers actively phone banking or knocking on doors. Now, we've, I keep emphasizing phone banking because it's been awfully cold out there. So a lot of people have been phone banking in lieu of knocking on doors because it's been virtually impossible to get anybody to open the door. But we've distributed a quarter of a million pieces of literature. Bill's been out at the L stops. He's had a lot of uh, success, I think, getting the word out about that. But in this ward, the 36th ward, and in these 44 wards that we've actively solicited the opinions of the voters, Miguel Del Valle is doing much better, surprisingly enough, than Ram says he is, or Carol for that matter. In the 36th ward, we have 21% of the vote. I'm not bragging about that. That's not a huge percentage. It's a six-person race. There are six people competing for this election. If you look at the numbers in every municipal election that has occurred in the last 20 years under our illustrious regime of Mayor Daley, you've seen a relatively small turnout compared to gubernatorial or presidential. About a half a million people vote. If a half a million people vote this time, and there's no indication that it's going to be this fantastic, overwhelmingly Obama-esque type election, because it's not. If half a million people vote, and Rahm takes 40 to 45% of the vote, you're talking about the remaining five candidates 
contending for about 300,000 votes. It's a remarkably important statistic to bear in mind. It's not a huge, massive number of voters that you need to win in getting this runoff. Our contention is that Miguel Del Valle or anybody to make second place just needs in the low 20 percentile. And there's several things that have happened in this past week. One of which is um, the supposed second runner-up to Ram just received the endorsement of the Tea Party and bragged about it. So you can look at that on Huffington Post. I think it's going to come out in the mainstream press. But the Who is that? some guy named Gary Chico. Um, so he received the Tea Party endorsement. And it's a glowing endorsement talking about how he's running to the right of Rahm Emanuel and in particular that he will throw open the question of residency for city workers, particularly police and fire, which is the way Gary Chico won those endorsements of those unions. He pandered and, and promised them just about anything they wanted. Now, that's one important development. And I think it's important because Gary Chico positions himself as a, one of the two Latino candidates, despite the fact that Miguel Del Valle in our phone banking is pulling 63% of the Latino vote. But I, I digress. I could stand, spend an hour telling you about what I really think is going on in the race, and I have the luxury of sitting a, a behind uh, a lot of numbers, and we have, like I said, 2,500 volunteers actively working. To get on the ballot, you need to collect 25,000 valid signatures. Miguel Del Valle collected 45,000 signatures, and we had 508 volunteers collecting those signatures. Rom turned in 90, and he paid boatloads of people, some people as high as $2 per signature. So when Mike Quigley was there, and he said, that's all you got, 45,000? One of our volunteers looked up, who had been out there since 4 in the morning, and said, yeah, that's what volunteers do, congressmen. And the whole crowd burst into laughter, including the Rom people which showed that we didn't have to buy the signatures and we don't have to buy this election. That's why I'm here, because I don't believe in trying to manufacture candidates. I don't believe in trying to create an ad that uses one man's congratulatory speech as you leave your job and tries to spin that as an endorsement for mayor. I don't believe in that stuff. Social media is affecting this campaign. There are... Um, all kinds of developments. One thing you might want to check out also is that this uh, video that's gone viral on YouTube made by some high school kids. Un I mean, Miguel got this video and he walks up at 1030 at night and he says, who did this? And I said, I have no idea who did this. And I had no idea who did it. And he's like looking at me like, what do you mean you don't know? You're supposed to know these things. I said, I have no idea who made this video. It has close to 10,000 hits on YouTube. It was made by high school kids who sat in an audience and watched Rahm Emanuel say incorrectly that after you take out Northside College Prep and after you take out Walter Payton, the top performing schools, high schools in this city are magnet schools. Baloney. Charter schools. Baloney. <coughs> They're all public schools. And these high school kids caught that. They caught it. And they went back and they said, this is crazy. Now they supported Miguel. But they decided to make a video. And they made a video. And they showed to the world that the top performing, seven top performing schools, high schools in Chicago are public schools. They're public schools. Rahm Emanuel doesn't even know this. And he wants to be mayor of our city and reform our education system. This is a travesty that this guy can get away with that, and no one in the mainstream media called him out on it. No one but these high school kids. And then they tried to say that we put him up to it. I met him for the first time about a week ago. That has 10,000 hits. There's a new dynamic, which is that we don't just have to rely on knocking on doors or phone banking. There's Facebook. There's tweets. Don't ask me how to tweet, but these kids are tweeting. And they're Facebook. <clears throat> and it's amazing. It's amazing. We did a Facebook, I didn't, but the young people in the audience, office did, Facebook event for Election Day. 
in the course of an hour, 170 people had viewed it, and 190 people were giving money. And we were asking people to come out on election day and help us. But more importantly, we asked our 2,500 volunteers to recruit 25 friends to vote for Miguel. That'll get us about 75,000 votes. We asked them to recruit some of their friends. So today, they were counting the emails and the Facebook responses where people said, here's my 25. And in my 25, two of my 25 said they're going to get 25. So already what we're seeing is the impact of social media on this election. And I am here to argue, and I'll argue with anybody, bring in Rahm Emanuel's campaign people, bring in those pollsters, who, by the way, one of which was a big contributor to Rahm, bring in those pollsters and bring in anybody. And I will sit here and I will argue that this election is not only up for grabs, it's eminently doable that the progressives, if they rally, if the people that want to see democracy in this city take hold, if the organizers in the communities and the organizers in the labor movement pull together and we get 5,000 people or 10,000 people out there actively engaging their friends, their family, and their neighbors and getting them to vote for Miguel Del Valle, I will argue with you that Rahm Emanuel's supposed mandate will evaporate. And on the 22nd of February, you're going to see something that this city has not seen since 1983. And I think that those of us who've been around a while, I was there in 83, I told Miguel this is round two, because I consider it round two. This will be a upset of historic proportions, depending on whether or not progressives rally and get their friends and neighbors and get them to the polling place. We need two things. We need you to get your friends and neighbors through emails, through Facebook, through tweets, through knocking on the doors, through phone calling. Go through your phone. Call them. Make sure that they're moving. We need you to combat the cynicism and the lethargy that these push polls, these paid-for polls, have generated. And I won't deny that they have been effective at dampening support. But I will tell you this. Today, we had thousands of dollars come into our office. Every day, in fact, in the last two weeks, in fact, since Miguel won the debate on WGN, which everybody, even the Chico supporter in, 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 in blogger on NBC said, Miguel got an A, <laughs> graded the man with an A. Ever since that debate, our money has gone up exponentially. We got 500, more than 500 volunteers signed up on our website after that debate. Tonight there's a debate. Thursday night there's another debate. And Thursday night, watch Thursday night's debate and see how clear the differences will be between these two machine candidates, Carol Mosley Braun and Miguel de Valle. So we need you to get those votes. We need you to give us some money. We're about to go on TV. We have an advertisement. That's going to come out on uh, regular broadcast stations. We need to pay for that. Ads cost three to $7,000 a piece. We need you to give us some money. And we need you to get votes. Those are the two things we need you to do. We have an incredible staff. We have an incredible group of volunteers. We have eight campaign offices. We have eight field offices. That's more than any other candidate in this race. We're very confident about uh, the work that we're doing Miguel uh, obviously has a long history uh, with, in the progressive movement, but also in the African-American community. Worked for Harold Washington, one of the first to endorse Barack Obama. So we are very confident that with the right amount of work, it's not magic, it's work. Right amount of work, we will, we will make it there uh, on February 22nd, but we need your help. Thank you.